got a thing right here. Oh. AI is going to take our jobs. That's what my co-author and friend Alistair Kroll wrote in a recent Substack. So he believes that a wide range of tasks for which we currently pay humans, especially those in creative fields, will go away. So when I'm trying to understand where, when, uh, where tech might take society, I channel Herbert Simon. He says economies are driven by what is scarce. And so what is scarce is therefore valuable and in demand. So there's a ton of information and it's free. Information needs our attention. So when we have more info, we have less attention to give. So we live in an attention economy. But when AI tools like Midjourney and ChatGPT are abundant and cheap, what becomes scarce? What does AI consume? So the word attend has two different meanings. The first is to be present at something. You are attending this, this, this talk. There's no way around the fact that there are 24 hours in a day. But the second definition is to deal with a thing. We have matters to attend to, and we sort it out. A computer that does this on our behalf is what we are starting to call AI. AI can interpret English accurately and turn something that is English into something usable like a song. So the internet gives us a shortage of attention and AI is making attending to something cheap and easy. So in a not too distant future where AI generates one billion songs a month, three things will become scarce. Prioritizing, outcomes, and novelty. AI will give us a much wider range of ways that we can spend our days. Should we learn to play music or should we just generate some? It'll be up to us to figure out which interactions we can push off and delegate and which ones will deserve our attention. So an abundance of options creates a poverty of choice we'll need to choose wisely. Setting priorities in a world of distracting possibilities will become increasingly hard, and those who can do it best will win. With so many things that can be done, we'll value those that can actually get them done. As an example, when AI can create music for us, what'll be in demand are people who can interpret what the AI creates and produce something authentic, unique, tangible. Any outcome that can be done for low risk and low cost, we will just hand that over to AI. Put in a quarter, get a song. A billion new bands, none of them real. Humans who can turn AI inspiration into real world hits will be in particularly high demand. We will walk, uh, AI will walk the talk the talk, we will walk the walk. Schools will become on ramps because the startups you create for a business course or a science fair in innovation that turns into technology or that like track you did in music school will become actual business successes. We will want outcomes. Now, imagine you're standing in the foothills of the Him Himalayas. You walk uphill. When you get to the top, unless, you're cl unless you climbed Everest, you'll have to go downhill to go higher. So you're standing at local maximum, but not the global maximum. AI algorithms are always trying to run uphill. They're constantly optimizing by trying to get better at their core tasks. That's literally the learning in machine learning. But sometimes to get higher up, you need to fall downhill for a while. You need to stop using AI and make weird stuff. If AI is smart, we are the muse. So what comes after the attention economy? Post-scarcity doesn't track. Some people say it's the augmented economy. But that doesn't really convey the scarcity that drives demand. So if Herbert Simon were with us today, I think he'd consider priority, outcomes, and novelty 
as candidates for the next economy. So if you're a musician or a music tech startup today, you should ask yourself, how are you building towards those economies?